Hi guys, I'm gonna uh, show you my gen the Genesis uh, board that I've been working on. This is the no saving sa basic um, Genesis board. You notice it has two ROM slots, and the, really the second ROM slot is if you plan to make a multi game, which this is capable of. So a uh, microcontroller would go here and a um, like a HC-139 would go here. So we, we plan to offer a kit where if you want to make a multi-game and you have the, and you know how to make a multi-game, whereas um, either you combine mul several games on one chip or you just use one game on one chip and another game on the other chip, uh, which is the simplest multi-game to make. But um, so anyways, uh, this is the no SRAM version if you notice, it says no byte swap here. So you, this board does not require you to do the byte swap when preparing your ROMs. You just uh, burn them native to what they are and, um, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna show you some of the builds that I've done um, in no particular order because my shells don't have labels yet, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be putting in. So um, this looks like my four and one, or it could be an eight and one. Eight is kind of the maximum, but four is the practical maximum of games you can have. So here, this is in Sector X, obviously. So I've got my, I've got a little stack of magnets here. And really, you, you only need, you only need one. But it's a small magnet, it's easier to hold than their stack, so I got a stack. So you put the magnet right up here in the left corner of the cartridge. Power, turn the power off, turn it back on. And that will cycle your game. And so, air busters. Now the nice thing about this is that it remembers what game you were playing. So let's say you have a power outage or you turn it off and um, you want to come back, so when you turn it back on, it will come back to the same game that you were last playing. So I'm going to hold my magnet up here again. If you notice, the frame, the screen freezes, and which is normal. And then so what you have to do is you have to turn it off and turn it back on to reset the processor. Sometimes hitting reset will work, but... Um, but it's safer just to turn it off and turn it back on because sometimes pushing reset does not reset the sound processor. So I'll hold that there again, turn it off, turn it on. I think this is just my four in one. So, um, so, and then this should bring us back to the first one that we were playing in Sector X. So, so this is my four in one. And then, um, let's see here. Okay, so I have a Mortal Kombat 2 Unlimited. I guess it's a hack version. This is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. So this is my two-in-one. Um, come on, show me the screen. So Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. So I got my magnet. Hold it in the corner. Turn it off. Turn it back on. So this is the Mortal Kombat 2 Unlimited. Did ever show the title screen? There it is. So Mortal Kombat 2 Unlimited. So this one, it, because the they're both uh, use four megabit ROMs, so this one you'd have is the simplest multi-game where you got game one and game two. 
And so um, we've got little jumpers up here that do a, a setting of what kind of, um, of a pattern you want to do. And then this little guy up here is the magnet sensor. So, um, so in essence, uh, that's the multi-game. If you notice, these also have an extra hole here. Or maybe it's this one, the outer ones. It's that one and this one. Uh, this is so this can fit in a 32X um, console cartridge. So you can make 32X games with this board as well. Okay, so let's see here. What is this one? So right now I'm showing you my games that don't use SRAM, the ones that don't save. So this is my Golden X 3-in-1. So here's number two. Hold the magnet. Turn it off, turn it back on. There, gold next three. And magnet power. And gold next one. So this is my three and one. Let's see here. Okay, so another example. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have all the outruns in one cartridge? This is Outrunners. Here's Outrun. Turbo Outrun. And Outrun 2019. Okay. So you can kind of see a pattern here. Uh, which one is this one? I should have marked them. Okay, so this is the turtle one. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <sighs> um, again, this is another two-in-one. So you got uh, tournament fighters. And this is um, Hyperstone Heist. So, so um, yeah, I'm not catching all that in my. You get the idea. Um, so this is another example of the multi-game, but both games are in one ROM instead of two. So you don't need the decoder when you just have only one ROM. So it's pretty simple to set up. Okay, moving on. What is this? I think this is just a single. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is on the SRAM version, so um, I'll get to that in a second. Here. All right, so we got this one. I don't know if you can tell too, but all the fingers are gold fingers. So that's a nice touch. Okay, so this is Fantasy Star. This is the SRAM version. And um, 
So all three fantasy stars save. And I haven't put any save points on these, so there's really nothing to show. So. Uh, unlike my other uh, Super Nintendo reset-based games, this one, there's uh, no delay. As soon as it detects the magnet, it's switching. Uh, whereas the Super Nintendo stuff is, was three seconds. So here's Fantasy Star. So now I haven't received my production run of the SRAM boards in yet. So this is just my prototype that's been kind of mocked up with some glue and some wires. but it'll look essentially the same. And so um, this will have the four megabyte saving option, you know, if your game's four megabytes or two. Uh, in a multi-game, uh, you can have the microcontroller tell the cartridge when this ROM is four megabytes or not, so it can switch accordingly. And so all your saves will actually save. So. So this is, um, so all the, basically all the parts are on this side of the board. And then just the ROM, and then if you're going to do a multi-game here. So if you're not doing a multi-game, you know, this part wouldn't be here. None of this would be here. And you just put your ROM here and set your jumpers and you're good to go. Um, so, so basically I've made this, you know, it can be a single game like Mega Man Wily Wars or or um or it can be a multi-game you know with the with the additional kit and the uh, magnet sensor and so um so that's um that's pretty much it uh for what the one that saves looks like so that's the same thing with the magnets see I don't I think that's about it. Um, I'll show you this one. This is again another one of my prototypes. <clears throat> I think this is the one that actually is eight games in one. Um, but eight games won't be offered in the kit. Um, I, I had to do certain limitations for making the multis and even though I can kind of hack it up and do some jumpers and whatnot to make it an eight game kit, uh, it won't be something commonly available for the public. And so, but it is capable and that's the only reason why I'm showing this is, um, is that it is capable, but it won't be in kit form. And maybe we might do it maybe by special request or something. Um, but but generally speaking, um, the eight and one is not not going to be um, easily available. Maybe that's the better way of saying it. So let's Space Invaders ninety one. So the Genesis games are tiny. Some of them are 256K, and, and the cartridge is only capable of cycling one megabyte games or bigger. And so if you have games like, like, like Space Invaders 91, you, know, you have to go into a hex editor and expand the size of it. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, but you would definitely have to know where to put the second game inside the ROM. You know, at the right spot uh, for the for the game to be able to detect it. And so, so, um, so really, that's about it in a nutshell. The ones that um, save are being produced or going to be produced soon, so they'll be available soon. So essentially, all the parts come on it, except for the ROM. That's all. You, so when you get my kit, you have to put a battery on, program your ROM, 
set a couple of jumpers and you're done. And all the parts on the back come pre-assembled, ready to go. So now the the no SRAM one, you just get a bare board. I mean, seriously, there's no point in assembling this one because there's only, if you're making a single game, you just need one capacitor, another capacitor, and that's it. I set a couple jumpers and you're done. So that seems silly to have those pre-assembled two two parts. Now the kit requires, you know, more capacitors and more parts, but you know, again, uh, not everybody's going to want a kit. A lot of people just use this as a single. And so again, it's, um, I can't make it too easy. So, so, um, so that's about it. That pretty much gives you a pretty good rundown of, um, of um, my Genesis carts and their capabilities. You know, they can be as simple as one game and very almost no effort to make it. Or if you want to make a multi-game and you know how to to do that, then um, you can buy the, the kit that'll have all the parts you need to make the multi, um, except for the EEPROM, of course. And, um, and then, um, you're ready to go. So, um, feel free to, uh, ask questions or send me comments. Um, I haven't sold these yet except to one person and they tell me they love them, especially the 32X part where they can make 32X games. And, um, and so, um. So I think it's a pretty cool board. And um, so the SRAM, I know the question is, how much are they? And and um, and how much is the kit? And you know when when will the SRAM boards be produced and available? Okay, got all those. I know those questions are coming. We're thinking uh, this board here should be probably, you know, five bucks, maybe maybe bulk discount, four dollars, and then that the microcontroller kit would probably be also um, the multi-game kit would be probably another five dollars. Um, so the parts aren't cheap. The magnet sensor is about a dollar. The, the decoder is about fifty cents. The microcontroller is about a dollar. You know, and other related capacitors, you know, so five bucks is probably a, a pretty damn good deal, really. Um, these are subject to change, of course. Um, but um, we'll see how it goes. So the, um, the SRAM version, um, uh, we're not quite sure on pricing yet. Um, Guessing these will be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe ten dollars. Um, probably pretty close, you know, ten bucks. Um, and then you know the multi-game kit is just like the single, the no SRAM one, where where um, you know you, it's the same. You add the same parts, so it's um, so probably the multi-game stuff is the same. Probably about five dollars or so. Um, the, these boards we have available now, you can buy them today. Um, the SRAM ones, we haven't, like I said, we haven't produced them yet. Um, of course the SRAM version is not set up for the 32X, just to make that clear. Uh, this is just Genesis Mega Drive. Um, these will probably be produced uh, in about a month or so. So maybe available in two months. I only have so much money and uh, producing these things costs quite a bit of money. And so uh, I've got to get some of my Super Nintendo uh, sales rolling on the, on the um, 
boards I make for the Super Nintendo. Got to get those some money in from some of those because I just ordered a huge amount of those. And so when I sell some of those, I can uh, get the Genesis ones produced. And, uh, and so again, the main the main goal of this is you know the ease of use. You know, no one likes soldering in you know a dozen parts to make something work. You know, time is money, and if you can buy a board that already has all the parts on, ready to go, and all you have to do is burn your EEPROM and mount it, that's a win. And so, especially if the price difference between, you know, the whatever's available out there now as, as a bare board, you know, if the difference is between buying that one and this one is only three or four bucks or five or six dollars, then that's my time's worth that, so... Um, and so, you know, and again, this one was made so you don't have to do the byte swap uh, with your programmer. Some programmers don't have byte swap. Some people didn't even, don't even know what byte swap is, which um, byte swapping essentially is um, rearranging the output data to exchange with itself, essentially. You know, one zero through seven swaps with uh, eight through fifteen, and vice versa. And so, um, so uh, these I made these because I just didn't want to do the byte swap. I wanted to take a native file as it is, as I get it, as I download it, or whatever, and um, and just program it and go. And um, so. That is, um, that is what we are offering and, and uh, what we're going to be offering. And uh, it was an amazingly tight fit in this shell. But as you can see, it does fit. And um, there are no uh, stresses or, or um, you know, it, it fits and it fits well and and um, I think it's cool. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, just give me a message either um, through YouTube or through the snesunlimited at gmail.com. And um, thanks for watching.